Hi and welcome to The Winning Factor. I'm Alan Aitken and on this show each week we take a look at some upcoming racing in Hong Kong and try to isolate an element of a race that we might look back on later as having been a path to finding the winner. Well, Sunday racing this week in Hong Kong and a really noteworthy meeting, of course, every year. This is a uh, cultural icon in Hong Kong, the Chinese New Year race day. And uh, we uh, go into a new uh, lunar year coming uh, Sunday, Sunday night. And uh, that would be the year of the ox. And apropos of nothing really, I just thought we'd take a look back at the last year of the ox and a trainer's table constructed from the results for that year and see who was firing. So this table shows you the winningest trainers from the previous year of the Ox in 2009. And who's at the top of the list? Casper Founds. And Casper will be hoping that that's a lucky omen as we go into this year of the Ox as he seeks a fourth championship title. And in addition, we've just passed the halfway mark of the season, uh, a noteworthy uh, point every year. And I thought we'd check in uh, on some facts and figures regarding uh, how the major players are going. And usually I'm a bit uh, trainer heavy when it comes to these statistics. So I make no apology for that. There are good reasons for it. Uh, but something that one of my Twitter followers said uh, recently uh, about the uh, jockeys, the state of the uh, jockeys table and uh, who's performing and who's outperforming. And I thought we might take a different kind of look at the jockeys uh, premiership. And that is through the prism of who is performing versus the market. And if you take a look at this graphic, uh, of course, we know on the normal table, it's Joe Moreira and Zach Purton at the top of the tree. But looking at it, uh, through the market perspective, uh, it looks a little different. Joe is still at the top outperforming the uh, betting, but there's no sign this season of Zach Purton. And uh, he's actually ranking last. And if we take a look at this next graphic, that is really unusual. Uh, we've become used to Purton actually outperforming Marrera in terms of the betting market uh, most years. Uh, Marrera, usually the expectations are high too high to actually deliver, but that isn't the case this season. And uh, that is a very big turnaround. And uh, some time since uh, Joe Marrera dominated Purton from that angle, and that was five years ago. So that's a few things to uh, think about as you're punting in the second half of the season. But uh, first of all, let's get back to Sunday's racing. And the first race we're going to take a look at here is race three and our winning factor, the sectionals. Now, I think the discussions on this uh, class four over 1400 metres are really gonna centre around two horses. There doesn't look a huge amount of depth to the race, but the last start to impressive win, a new future, and the likely leader, a horse who won two starts ago at this course and distance, Super 10, look the main players. So I'm gonna take a look at uh, how they set up for this race and uh, that is made more convenient for us by the fact that each of them had their last start on the same day, three races apart on January 17. So this is race 346. And as he had done winning his prior start, Super 10 in the uh, red, white and black colours, leads at just a leisurely speed. He spends little energy in front to the home turn. And then he and the other leaders uh, let down with a powerful uh, sprint down the straight, the final 400 metres. Super 10 this time, uh, with 10 pounds more than his previous run, not quite able to sustain the effort well enough to win, but he certainly isn't beaten far in a blanket finish. Then three races later, we saw New Future spring a surprise at very long odds, but there was no element of fluke about it. This is 349, the race, and if you look at the heat map here, uh, he's uh, getting a lot of speed up front in the early stages. He's towards the rear, brown and white colours, and that uh, fast pace up front is really suiting a horse who's going to run on strongly. So the leaders get into a competition for the front. They had to tire in the straight, and here's New Future right down the outside. He's the one who finished best, and very impressive coming right away on the line. 
Now, of those two, I'm sure you uh, prefer uh, New Futures performance. And his final 400 metre sectional that day ranked 11th at the meeting, uh, while Super 10 was only able to rank 33rd. Uh, but I want to take a comparison of their finishes a step further than that, and uh, it will be important to this race. And that is to add the 800 metre sectionals. Usually uh, we only look at the final 400 metre splits and in that regard New Future was around about two lengths faster than Super 10. Not a huge uh, difference, but something often ignored is the 800 metre section and there you really see how New Future sustained that powerful finish. Unleashing from the 800 metres 1.6 seconds faster than Super 10 had done in his race. That's a considerable margin. And the reason that big difference is important to us is the map. Because when we take a look at that, I can once again see Super 10 uh, leading, probably having a very easy time once again in front and ready to sprint hard down the straight, while New Future from his wide draw is likely going to get a long way back again. And that is the aspect of the race that gives Super 10 a chance. But the tip for me in race three, New Future. His winning factor, the sectionals. A straight reading of the way this race is going to be run is that New Future is going to have to give away a big start uh, to his major rival, and that gives Super 10 a chance to pinch a break and be too far ahead. But as we saw on that sectional comparison, there was a massive gap between how they finished the second half of their races, and I think that's going to be enough for uh, New Future to be able to get over the top of Super 10. The second race on Sunday that I want to look at is the feature. This is race eight, the Chinese New Year Cup, and our winning factor here, the last start winner up in class. Now this is a, uh, a race with a bit of history. It's a race that has launched group one careers for horses like Good Baba, Glorious Day, Super Kid, and a number of others. So it's a great stepping stone race. Whether we see that from this year's crop remains to be seen, but it's certainly a race with uh, plenty of talent involved, featuring uh, Douglas White trying to be the first trainer to win first up in Hong Kong with a class one horse in well over a decade with the Derby hopeful congratulations. I think Super Oasis has a chance at the weights, but I think the best prospects may lie with the Tony Cruz trained last start class two winners Beauty Smile and California Rad. And horses rising in class off a last start win. Uh, that's a factor that we often visit on this show. Uh, those horses have a very good strike rate as they rise in class. So we're going to take a closer look uh, at firstly the performance of Beauty Smile last start, winning in class two, a well-deserved effort after some consistent form. And this is race 388 and a very evenly run race. You can see on the heat map, he's in the black and pink colours, poised just behind the leaders throughout the race, and the pace neither fast nor slow, and Beauty Smile able to get balanced and do his best and break through for a victory after some very consistent efforts in the lead up. Now, California Rad, also a last start winner in class two, uh, but rather than show you that race, as good as it was, he was, he was held up and uh, got out late and finished too strongly, I thought I'd show you his subsequent barrier trial because uh, this way we can also take a look at how he lines up next to the uh, unraced or unraced in Hong Kong horse, congratulations. So this uh, barrier trial is from February the 2nd and California Rad, he's in the light green colours, uh, sitting wide on the track. Oh, congratulation is in those white colours with a pink V, pink striped arms, and congratulations, looks in pretty good form here. He looms up in the run down the home straight with some real purpose. But when you see the turn of acceleration from California Rad in the straight, he quickly gobbles him up, puts him away. And I think that speaks uh, of the classy look that California Rad has always had about him. On our map, I think both of the cruise horses are going to have uh, ideal trips. If we take a look here, both with inside draws, only a small field. And uh, the uh, leader here, King Shield, the uh, usually a dirt horse, uh, he looks the likely front runner. Uh, he'll take up the front, no reason for him to set a particularly fast pace. 
So these two cruise horses will get every chance to employ their best in the run home and use their draws and their weight pull uh, to get the right result. But the tip for me in race eight, California Rad. His winning factor, the last start winner up in class. Now, obviously both of these cruise runners uh, have that uh, factor behind them, but I think that barrier trial win just convinces me there is a touch of class about California Rad that Beauty Smile might not be able to reach. Well, that's it from the winning factor this week. Enjoy the racing on Sunday. Kungi Fat Choi for the Year of the Ox. We'll see you next time.